Yeah, I was born in a, in a small rural town in the Free State Province of South Africa called Kroenstadt um, in 1951. And Kronstadt, the Afrikaner society then, was very conservative. I came from a very conservative Christian nationalist, uh, Afrikaner nationalist family. Um, very strict upbringing, very conventional. Lived in a world where we didn't really know much about the world outside of us. Um, Kronstadt was more or less my universe as a young child and especially um, white Kronstadt and Afrikaans speaking Kronstadt. That was my immediate environment. Um, the rest of the country you didn't really take notice of and black people you don't take notice of. They just work in the kitchen and in the garden and you see them sometimes on the streets and you sometimes hear the adults talk about uh, the threat that they pose to white survival and the civilization and stuff like that. So very insulated uh, existence. Um, and I left high school there and then went to Stellenbosch University. Uh, no, I first went to do a year of military, compulsory military training. Fortunately, it was before there were any wars going on, so I didn't have to fight in any war. I just learned to march up and down and shoot a few guns, and I wasn't very good at it. And then I went to Stonebosch University, which in those days, and that was 1970, was kind of glorified high school. Uh, it's more of the same. There were no black students, very few English-speaking students, um, strong discipline, um, and I found it hugely disappointing and that in itself was very spectacular for a 17 year old from the rural areas. So I suppose my university education did mean something to my development. Um, but it was more or less the same. Uh, the, the leader of the Afrikaner Bruderbund, which is the secret powerful Afrikaner society which sort of run, ran society here for a while. The, the leader was also the head of the university, which gives you an idea of um, what went on at, at, at Afrikaans universities at the time. There was a bit of a rebelliousness among students in the early 70s, uh, but not, nothing serious. Um, I was strangely enough, um, when I look back, the first thing that I noticed that I can remember back was I was touched by the American students who were shot, I think it was at Kent State University. And we didn't have television then, I must have read it somewhere. And I remember being outraged. I think it was possibly one of the first political emotions I ever had in my life. Um, that fellow students could be shot for just expressing their views and for fighting for peace. And I mean, it, it later on didn't pass me by that the injustice to white American students was what stirred my political feelings and not the injustice uh, of the apartheid system around me. But at the university, used, I started broadening my horizons a little bit and started noticing where we live and in what uh, situation the country was in. I then started working for the Afrikaans newspaper in Cape Town called Die Burger, which was officially a mouthpiece of the National Party, which is the main party supporting apartheid, uh, the ruling party. And it was very interesting to me because I, it was more intellectually stimulating but I think I misunderstood um, the code uh, of Afrikaans journalism of the time because you were taught uh, as a cub reporter that what you do is reflect the truth and, and the full truth to your readers and you don't pander to politicians or anybody else and I thought that was it. The code was of course 
that unless those politicians were the leaders of Afrikanerdom or the leaders of the National Party, then you do treat them differently.